We're sorry, your call cannot be completed as dialed. Please check the number and dial again. This is a recording. From 1918 to 1984, for nearly 70 years, Ma Bell held a nationwide monopoly over residential telephone service. Telecommunications technology barely changed during that period. How did Ma Bell maintain its control over a stagnant market? Because of the federal government, which made it illegal for firms to compete against the Bell monopoly. Then two things happened. First, in 1984, a federal court dismantled the old telephone monopoly. Competition finally began to bloom. In 1996, Congress overhauled America's communications laws and dismantled Ma Bell era price controls. As a result, a host of innovative new services emerged and telephone and cable companies began to invest in bringing broadband service to homes across America. For over a decade, broadband in the United States has largely been a success story. High-speed internet has grown vastly more available, while millions of Americans are signing up for broadband every year. At the same time, internet speeds have increased rapidly, even as real prices have fallen. But our broadband market is still healing from the wounds that government inflicted on it years ago. Most of today's biggest broadband companies are either descendants of the old Bell monopoly or cable companies that got their start long before the internet emerged. Some Americans today can only get broadband from one company, while most consumers have just two broadband choices. But this market isn't done evolving. Study after study has found that broadband in America is growing more competitive thanks to new technologies. Over 20 million Americans can now get fiber optic broadband at home, while a growing number can get 4G wireless broadband that's 10 times faster than a typical smartphone broadband connection. The state of broadband a few years down the road will make today's market look downright criminal. Supporters of net neutrality, or open internet regulation, aren't satisfied with today's broadband market. Neither are we. But thrusting the entire telecommunications industry back under the thumb of government, as if it were still 1918, is a recipe for stagnation and market failure. Net neutrality rules may be well intended, but they will foreclose the business models of tomorrow by dictating market outcomes and discouraging investment and entry. Regulations that might seem perfectly sensible to some today will enshrine a 2010 conception of fairness into law. The government tried fixing the telephone market with the same kind of intervention 90 years ago. It didn't work out well then, and it certainly won't work out well today. The number you have dialed has been disconnected. The proper way for government to address tensions between broadband firms like Comcast and content companies like Google is to respect property rights and allow the networks of tomorrow to be built. Today's broadband market may not be perfect, but it's like grass that's just beginning to grow after languishing under a heavy rock for years. Waiting for it to grow and thrive may be frustrating, but as long as its basic needs are met and no rocks are in the way, it will grow in time. The point is, nobody knows what the telecommunications market of tomorrow will look like. If the government wants to help broadband users, it should free up the airwaves and promise once and for all to stay out of micromanaging broadband networks. That's the best way to ensure that today's broadband market grows into a vibrant and competitive one.